Ladies and gentlemen, we now welcome our players onto court for the semi-finals. First player onto court, ladies and gentlemen, is from Birmingham. She won her second semi-final appearance with a win over Victoria Lust. She was the national champion in 2015. She was a fina finalist in the Roehampton Open and a semi-finalist at TOC in New York in 2016. She has 13 World Tour finals with eight World Tour titles. Ladies and gentlemen, she is ranked eight in the world. Would you please welcome Sarah Jane Perry. Her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, is from London. She is a four times national champion and beat the Welsh national champion to gain a 13th semi-final appearance. She's a career high of number three in the world. She has 12 World Tour titles, ranked two seed for this event, ranked number 10 in the world, ladies and gentlemen, Alison Waters. Good evening everyone and welcome back to the 2017 Blowers Jewelers British National Squash Championships. We've had uh, two superb semi-finals this afternoon already with Laura Massaro coming through against Emily Whitlock into her seventh final here and that was followed by a very tightly contested affair between Jolie and Adrian Waller. Jolie in his first ever semi-final and now a final to look forward to tomorrow. They'll both have to wait and see who they'll be up against in that final. Two more semi-finals coming your way this evening. First up are the women, and it's the two ladies you see before you. Second seed, Alison Waters up against third seed, Sarah Jane Perry. Alison Waters in the red top and shoes there, and uh, Sarah Jane Perry in the blue. So, Alison Waters, a 32-year-old, is a four-time champion at this event, winning her first back in 2008. 12th national, national Championships in all, so a very experienced campaigner. Waters currently ranked 10 in the world, a former world number three, that was back in 2010. And uh, on the PSA Tour, Alison has been enjoying a very good run of form lately. Started the season well with a quarter final at the US Open and uh, runner up at the Carol Weimuller Open. And she did actually beat uh, Perry quite recently at a small tournament in Roehampton in the final, that was three love. Came through a very tough quarterfinal yesterday against Tesney Evans, scraping through 11-9 in the fifth against uh, the very informed Welsh number one. So uh, looking to make a ninth appearance in the final here at the British Nationals. It's been a very successful event for Waters over the years. And she is up against the tall, imposing figure of Sarah Jane Perry. This is Perry's eighth appearance at the Nationals. She was a very surprise winner here in 2015, beating uh, a strong favourite that year, Massaro, in the final. And that win really seemed to uh, catapult Perry onto the scene at international level as well. She's currently ranked eight in the world. That's her highest so far, and that's off the back of a very good season. Semi-finalist in Alaram back in September, where she took out uh, Nicole David in the quarter-final. And that was followed with a semi-final at the Carol Weimler Open. And just last month, she managed to beat Amanda Sobey and Rini Melwalili back to back to make the semi-finals at the Tournament of Champions. So uh, she's coming here off the back of her best achievement so far. Like her opponent, she didn't have an easy ride in her quarter-final. Very tough match against Victoria Lust, which Perry eventually won 11-8 in the fifth. A bit shorter than the Waters-Evans match, just uh, 54 minutes as opposed to 75 minutes for Waters, so possibly slightly fresher in the legs. And there's just that one result between these two this season, which was the Waters win in Roehampton, so not much to go on in terms of recent head-to-heads. So joining me once again in commentary is uh, former world number two, Jenny Duncar. Evening, Vanessa. Evening, and there's our referees for this match. It's Dean Clayton. The uh, referee and marker is Paul Clark. So 
So Jenny, you've played both of these girls, particularly Waters, uh, many a time in the past. What do you what do you uh, what do you reckon? Um, I think it's actually quite a tough one to call. I'm expecting an entertaining affair. They tend to have good matches. Um, both of them, as you said, having tough battles in the quarterfinals. Alison playing the later of the two matches, so possibly a little bit more in the legs, but they're used to that and hopefully they're both feeling fresh enough to put on a good show tonight. I'm sure they are. Sarah Jane Perry coming off the back of a great week in New York at the Tournament of Champions, reaching the semi-finals, which is her best achievement to date in a World Series event, so she's surely got to be feeling confident. But Alison getting the better of her in their last meeting at the smaller event, BSBA tournament, winning three love. So I'm sure she'll have confidence from that. So, yeah, it should be a good one. Yeah, they've both been quite good uh, form, haven't they? So I feel like uh, Waters has almost made a bit of a resurgence. She maybe dropped back a little bit um, sort of about a year ago. And then this season, I feel like she's sort of caught up again with that top eight sort of level. Yeah, she has. She's had a couple of good results. One against uh, Camille Serm recently, but then not Time. particularly starting this year off as she would have liked, losing the first round at the Tournament of Champions um, in a tough five-setter against the Egyptian and the Salman Ali Ibrahim. But she played well yesterday to fend off Tesney Evans, who played a lovely game of squash. Al really had to <laughs> dig in to pull through that one. Interestingly as well, in the recent PSA rankings, SJ has gone above Al in the top 10. I think she's at her highest world ranking of eight. Um, something that I'm sure Al would like to reverse, reverse as well. Well, she's, uh, she's certainly the more experienced of the two, but uh, Perry has been in ridiculous form, as you mentioned. That uh, incredible run at the Tournament of Champions. But uh, as I mentioned, she's done very well at this event historically. It's always been quite a good sort of hunting ground for Waters. Seems to really enjoy playing here. Yeah, I think this is probably the first year in a while that we haven't played each other. We tend to always play at the Nationals. Nice for a change. And SJ, as you said, won that 2015 title, which was a brilliant result especially at the time she came out of nowhere to take that and is definitely a force to be reckoned with. She's a confident player isn't she? She's always struck me even sort of before she was up at this level that she had a real sort of sense of, of, of confidence okay. and her ability. Blowers, jewellers, yeah she does, she likes to try and exude that confidence as well. Women's semi-final. Give off Alison that impression. Waters to serve, That's half the battle, Sarah Jane Perry to receive, the best of five Pretend games, level. <laughs> so Waters kicks us off in our second women's semi-final. Laura Massaro waiting in the wings to see who she'll meet. Yeah, I think she'll enjoy sitting back and watching these two battle it out. One love. <laughs> nice taxi and to no. start <laughs> the match off. Oh. SJ there. Al going back down, whatever motorway it is she gets to London on. We've seen quite a bit on this court that when the Two, opportunity one. arises around the middle, that straight drop really is effective. Just dies in the front corner.
down. Three, one. Select three one. The fans enjoying the local culinary delights <laughs> served at the stalls around here. Great use of the wrist again from Perry. Lovely finish. She's a hugely talented player, isn't she? And out. She really two, is. Three. She's got such strength in the wrist, she manages to hold it and delay it very well and then still has that power to get the ball through. Yeah, very strong, strong girl and uses her height really well on the volley. It's very hard to make her do those movements sort of full court, get her reaching and into the out, back and then right four, into the front. That's two. obviously what you have to try to do because she is such a tall athlete. But she makes that very difficult using that reach along the, across the middle. Contrasting styles, these two waters. Stroke to Perry. A bit more stro Stroke straightforward with her game, and but out. very Three, attacking four. still. Plays it. Yeah, she's pace. a lot more direct, isn't she? But still attacking. Here's Perry, slightly more creative. But perhaps not as solid at times. Yeah, and that's probably what we'll. See Waters trying to do, keeping that and ball out. quite straight and sort of frustrating Five, Perry three. into making some silly choices that she can then exploit. Yeah, and this is a sort of shot, it's a risky shot to play, but being six foot tall as Perry is, it's a long way down picking those shots just above the low tin up. I mean, that's a sort of brutal movement for anyone, isn't it? That, that uh, two wall boast that's sort of fading away, especially onto the forehand for some reason. Yeah, she really has to get him moving as far up the court as she can, but as we've said, she's a skillful player, so when Waters puts the ball in short, it has to be of a high quality. Saw that in the uh, Waller-Lee match, actually. He's obviously very tall as well. When he was forced to really get down low, it's such and difficult out. movement. Yeah. And even if you get the ball back, to Five. then get back into position for the next shot. Yeah, she does well, um, Perry. Over the last couple of years, she really uses that lob well from the front. You think you've got her, and then she'll just lift herself out of trouble and recover. You have to hit a pretty decent lob to get it past the Perry volley. Yeah. Sure. Five all. After a slightly scrappy start from Perry, she's really tidied things up. Get herself back to parity here. Oh. It's good length though, isn't it? Six, five. She's improved so much in, in that area, hasn't she? I mean, she's got such a high skill level that she used to just almost be too tempted to be overambitious and she get a bit carried away and she's really and become a Six much more thoughtful four. player. Yeah, she's reined it in slightly and started to use it at the correct times. Down. 
And out. I think that's a, the kind of shot that will work well for Perry when she holds it. So she, because Al stands so far forward on the tee, um, which can be very hard to play against if you don't hit your targets. But if SJ can hold it and then get the ball past Al, Al will actually have to do a lot of work going back into the back corners. Again, it's almost imperceptible, Eight, but there was just six. never so slight hold on that shot that just, I mean, it was a great finish anyway, but it just stops. See, she just makes a slight jump in the air waters without actually propelling herself forward. Yeah, she just waters the straight volley drop as the one to hit. Stroke to Perry. Stroke to Perry. Nine, six. There's a little bit of room there. There's a little bit right. of room on yeah. there. At the time, you may have given a let. Yeah. They, in the previous match, there was a few situations like that, and they weren't. Uh, they certainly weren't giving the strokes. But it's a three-point lead for Perry. She's played pretty impeccably from mid-stage of this game onwards. And again, wrong footing, Waters with the trickle boast. Ten, yeah, it's usually such a strong area for Waters, that forehand volley. It's usually, whoops. You play a let. Play a let, please. Back on court, play a let. I missed that. What's she appealing? <laughs> I think Al's saying the ball was down. Let's have a listen. Perry yes. needs to get back please on court. Please play a let on the server. I'm not the certain. strings have gone. Oh, right. Oh, I think it was fine, actually. Wasn't where she intended to hit it. Well, <laughs> slightly confusing as Waters are saying the serve was down, but she actually then hit it in the tin. I think the serve was up, but it just went Let's obviously went look. lower than she thought Let's it was going to go. Eyes are. It was fine. definitely oh. up. It hit the N of championships, yeah. and then Al's put it in the tin. Yeah. And SJ stops. <laughs> so it should really be and six, game Perry's ball. point, but they're playing a let. Well, they don't have the advantage of that replay, so fair enough. We'll give them the benefit. See if Waters can make the most of it. Down. It's unlucky. Eleven six. Game to Perry. So Perry leads by one the, game uh, to The forehand, which is usually such a strong area for Waters, letting her down on that last point. Sarah Jane Perry taking that first game, 11 6. A pretty solid start for Sarah Jane Perry. Nine minute game. She leads one game to love. Yeah, you can see that last rally, Waters was trying to pick the pace up quite a lot and she played the rally well but just faltered on that last forehand volley she's missed a couple of Sarah Jane Perry looking pretty relaxed out there she was slightly um, clipping a few sidewalls at the very start of the game but didn't let it affect her and settled down quite nicely didn't she yeah I feel like the holds really working well for her and it's not necessarily immediately obvious when you're watching, but it's just getting Waters a little bit unsteady on the tee. Yeah, it's having just to that cover both subtlety, corners. isn't it? Just putting that slight bit of hole just creates the doubt in your opponent's mind, which can play havoc on your movement. But the thing that Waters needs to do is not allow Perry the time to be able to hold the ball. She needs to try and get in front of her and 15 seconds. Keep positive and then maybe just a bit more clinical when she's got the chance. Yeah, she's more about sort of out and out pace, isn't she, Waters? She doesn't really use the hold much and uh, she needs to use that ability to, uh, to take time away from Perry. She can do it. She needs to get in the right frame of mind to get that balance of hard hitting, getting onto it early, but then the slight odd different angle and... 
It's easy when you watch, isn't it? I know. Like, well, even when you watch, sometimes it's not easy to spot necessarily what the right tactic is, and then you've obviously got to execute it as well. And when you play someone like Perry, you, you feel like you need to make the move Perry as leads, well, so you five, can one then the think love. you need to complicate it more than you actually do. And the simple thing like Double. the straight drop when she's behind you is probably the correct thing to do. Yeah, I think when you think about needing to move someone, then there's obviously going to be a tendency to open up the court as well, which is can be counterproductive against someone like Perry because that's then giving her the opportunity to use that hold, giving her a bit more space. Stroke to Perry. Stroke to Perry. One love. So it's being quite quite disciplined with the straight stuff without getting too sort of predictable. Yeah. better she was onto that earlier wasn't she she saw it coming straight onto it yeah down no. the line yeah perry was all over the cross court there wasn't she <laughs> and out nice finish but it all comes Two, off the back one. of uh, a drop from the back of the court from Waters. There's just no need to play it when your yeah, opponent's right really in front wasn't of you. It? Sublime little finish into the nick there, though. Three, one. And up and out. Two, three. It's a nice finish. A little bit of a loose start to this second game, isn't it? Slightly. Down. Yeah. And out. Again, ball more so from Waters, two. and it, particularly for her, it's crucial that she keeps that ball accurate. If she doesn't possess the weapons that Perry does, she has to be accurate. She has to be disciplined. She has to do what she does extremely well. to get it back. Again, oh, that's using the height well there. Yeah, great reach Five, across the middle there. Two. And athleticism from Perry, wasn't it? Full stretch. A lot of players wouldn't have been able to get on the volley there. That was definitely a go-go gadget. <laughs> a winning shot. It's got to be handy being six foot sometimes, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's right. certainly drawbacks as well. Obviously, I, six, two. I know it well in terms of talking to James <laughs> about it. I was going to say, um, I think the first time I saw Sarah Jane Perry play a few years ago, I thought of James was from <laughs> straight away. Well, you, you probably, as a tall player coming up, you probably look at someone like him and, and see how he deals with Three, it. six. At the time, they're both playing with Prince as well, obviously, extremely talented with the racket. Tall figures. I mean, it's just there's just a weight thing as well. Obviously, if you're taller, you're automatically Down. carrying more weight than and other out. players, which is, you know, going in and Seven out of every single three. lunge. So that starts to take its toll. You know, yeah. someone like Perry playing against players like uh, Camille Serm and Nicole David. Mm, so much more compact, aren't they? And Sarah Jane Perry's worked hard on that, on a physique in the last couple of years, or probably three three years now. She's trimmed down a lot. Eight, three. Well, she's absolutely storming away here. Eight, three in yeah. this second game. Waters is struggling here to get any sort of flow going in a game. SJ is looking pretty comfortable, isn't she? Just a 
little bit reactive from Allison at the moment. Yeah, she, Terry just looks like she's got so many options every time she's hitting the ball, giving way too much freedom on there. And this is where if she starts getting flicky dicky <laughs> show off time, then Al can get back in this. She does have a tendency to do that when she starts. In to see, that's overconfident. You can see it coming <laughs> <laughs> every time. Hand she down. gets when it gets four, to about a four eight. point lead, four five point lead. <laughs> it's not one for the <laughs> technicians out there. Not one to put up on YouTube. It's still such a fine line, though, isn't it? When you've got, even if it's a five point lead, I would like to see SJ just get that out of her system a Five, bit because she lets eight. players back in. She gets overconfident. And she's up against a quality player here. Who, if she gets a sniff, she can come back. Absolutely. Suddenly a player feeling really uncomfortable on there, which it looked like Waters was. You get a couple of points given to you and you suddenly start to feel a little bit better. Absolutely. The momentum switches and that's three in a row there for Waters now. And that was a tough physical rally as well. Six, eight. Better from Perry, much more business-like. Yeah, again, the six. hold and that whip cross court. Hand out. Interesting that one. I'm not. A lovely Flat shot by Albert. Yeah. Seven, I think nine. she'd have done well to straighten that. Still, SJ was waiting for the. Straight shot. And out. Again, catching her out with the hold and flicks, often going cross court. Ten, but seven. Really Bengal. struggling to read that. Giving uh, Sarah Perry three game balls for a big two love lead in this semi final. And out. Yeah, she's getting some joy from. Targeting Eight, that ten. deep backhand area against Bengal. Waters. As we know, Waters does like to push up on the tee. And if you can get it past her, she does a lot of work going into that corner. And against Perry, you've got to cover a lot of other shots as well, which is the tricky part. Yeah. Again, the hold doing the damage there on that cross court. 11, so Sarah Jane Perry in imperious Perry. form Perry here. Leads by two games takes to love. that second game, 10-8, 11-8, sorry. So it's a pretty long way back now for Waters. She's gonna have to do something. She's a tough competitor though. She is. She just got a bit too far behind early on in that game and almost managed to uh, crawl her way back. But She's getting stuck a bit in the back. And Perry's length and accuracy is really good. And Apart from that shot there, really, I think SJ pretty much got to most things. And that one. <laughs> she got to um, a point just before she sort of got went a bit crazy where she was looking so confident taking the ball in short, just looked like she had so much freedom on there. Got a little bit carried away, but managed to rein it in just in time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Alison's 
playing badly necessarily. She's just not accurate enough or completely sure of a game plan, I think, that she's trying to employ. She's got to get, get herself in front of Perry, hasn't she? She's got yeah. to get herself up on the tee, volleying, taking time away. 15 seconds. There was a stage in that game where Perry was just able to sort of hit shots at will. And Perry seems to be reading her quite well. She's not getting enough work into the legs. She's not pushing her back and sending her forward, which is what you've got to do against the taller player. And after time, that sort of pressure on a movement does get you the rewards. But at the moment, it's a bit too comfortable. The court's not big enough. Perry leads by a little two bit games to love. Too half court. Waters. Yeah, she does like to hit quite a low line. She's got to make sure she gets that ball running into those deep corners. She said she hasn't managed to make Perry Level. make those really difficult movements low in those back corners and then having to move right up into the front. Needs to make that court a lot bigger for Perry. Just 22 minutes of play so Down. far. It's pretty dominant shot. stuff, Perry. Yeah, I mean, I I hope Waters is feeling okay physically. It doesn't seem that long ago that I sat here watching her last oh. night battling Too out long. with Tesney Evans. And at two love, two love, it is a pretty long way back. Down and out. One, two. It was the right shot to hit. She just clipped the top of the tin. A little wry smile from Waters, knowing she was lucky. And again. Two. It's been working with um, Sue, Sue Rose, isn't it? Formerly known as Sue Wright, She's won, won a few of these. Yes, she has. Back in the 90s. But, um, she'll be pretty happy with her protege's performance so far, I'm sure. Definitely, yeah. We saw her looking at her phone in between games. I'm pretty sure that was Stroke Sue on the Perry. other end. Stroke Perry, hand out. I think she three, was here yesterday, two. wasn't she? I thought I saw her in one of the pictures. Right. Great Four, shot. Two. Using the low tin. Again, that cross court from the front forehand working well for her. There's an opportunity there for Waters and just hit a nothing cross court really. Yeah, she's just not quite getting it right. Nice. Not up. Better. There's that forehand. It's usually such a bread and butter shot for Waters. Hasn't, hasn't had too many opportunities to hit no. that so far. But it's the first time she's actually got Perry on the run. She was onto the ball at, on the front backhand quickly. That slight bit of hold sent it down the line. And then the distance from which Sarah Jane Perry came from, it made the drop a lot easier for Al to play. And I think that was fine. She's just questioning Waters' pick up. For all. It was a very good counter drop. Yeah. From Waters to set up that volley. She's just not yet been able to create that distance, has she? Apart from the last couple of rallies. Let's see if she can continue. Great shot. Five, four. Crowd enjoying that one. They've been fairly quiet, aren't they? The crowds, I feel, at the Nationals. Do tend to be a little subdued these days. Yeah, no that's net. true. No it has net. been a bit one-sided, I guess. Six, four. So far. But, You've made uh, a shot. 
Waters with a nice two-point lead here. You played a shot. You had a stab at it. That rules out your right to appeal. No let. Six so four. Perry asking for the let, but the referee saying that she uh, had a stab at it. Opted to play would be <laughs> another way of putting it. And out, five, six. And Perry just managing to get that ball dying off into the back corners. She's played it. <laughs> I have to say, you played on. No, you played on. No, it she looked, can't. No, no left. <laughs> she's, I think no. she's trying to say that she stopped and the ball just sort of Ms. came Perry, off her strings. Ms you have appealed. You've asked for an explanation which has been given. Please play on. But there was certainly no a, a down, swing there, seven, wasn't there? Five. Yeah, I know what she's saying, but going by the rules, she did play the shot. Needed to stop a little bit earlier. I think that was risky stopping, wasn't it? She just carried on there. Out. Chances again there. She on the volley, didn't Six, she? Waters. She's got to be extremely accurate, get it running down the line or staying shorter. Yeah, she hasn't been court. quite as clinical on the volley as you expect from her. Down. She's getting opportunities and then the ball is just kind of Seven landing on. in that nowhere area, half court. And on the other hand, Perry is really. Peppering those back corners nicely, isn't she? No let. No let. Got to play that. Hand out. Yeah, she was Eight, through, wasn't seven. she, really? I don't know why she doesn't play on there. The referees have been consistently giving no lets in these sort of situations for quite a while now. The power and the finish. <laughs> <laughs> the power and then the finesse. The power and, and touch. Eight all. <laughs> and then the fist pump. She really wants to get off in three here. Slightly missing those Down. opportunities. Hand out. She's let off there. Nine oh, eight. Yeah, I think it's because she is sort of being forced to react quite a lot. When she is then presented with an opportunity, she's not really capitalising. Ambitious from the back of the court. She was quite Ten, deep there. Eight. Game ball. Well, somehow Waters has managed to get herself two game balls in this third. Hand out, 9-10, game ball. Terry pulls one back. 
You love it when you hit a drive like that and it doesn't come back, don't you? You're hoping for it. <laughs> Stroke two, Waters. Stroke to Waters. 11, so the nine, stroke given. Game to Walters. Walters leads, uh, sorry, Perry leads by two games. So Alison Waters takes that third game, 11 9. Manages to pull one game back in this match. 10 minute game again. So Sarah Jane Perry still leading 2 1. 32 minutes of play so far. Yeah, she did really well there, Waters, to. Nick that game, she dug in, as we'd expect. She's a plucky little thing. She never gives up. She found a way to get through that. SJ possibly seeing the finishing line on a couple of shot choices a little bit too early. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily that she made a lot more errors. It was just maybe a few wayward choices. Waters, she, she quickened up a bit there though. I think she put a little bit more pace in the game, taking a bit of time away from Perry. Yeah, she looked a bit more sprightly at times in her movement and her footwork. That'll certainly give her a lift, won't it, having won that third game, even though she still hasn't really found her form. Yeah, but that'll give her a lot of confidence and a good boost to take into this fourth seconds. game. I do feel like it was kind of there for the taking for Perry, really. Just a slight drop off, maybe, in intensity. So she'll be very keen to rectify things in this fourth because she's been certainly the better of the two so far in this match. But that third can make things interesting. Oh, she's still on the phone, almost at the door. <laughs> Hope someone's got a charger for that phone. Yeah, it can sometimes mess with your head a little bit, can't it, when you've been so close and you feel like you're the better player and you Perry could have been off. By two games to one. We've all Waters been in that situation before, so she Lovell. should be used to it. Yeah, you just have to sort of reset everything, don't you? Go back to that game plan that you started the match with, kind of forget about the score, really. Nice improvisation. We just one got up. clipped there, I think. Oh, bopped <laughs> on the nose. So the nice face. little cricket shot there. Give me no, no let, sorry. Get hit in the face. No, because she then went through and played the shot. Again, she's not stopping in time. She's sort of trying to have a cake and eat it. <laughs> See if I can get it back and then ask for a let if it doesn't work <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm not sure what she was asking for there. It's better from Al. Again, if Al can get a good start in this game, then you know, psychologically that has a big impact. The Perry's had such a sort of strong, strong lead in this match. She's hit so many of a hold and cross court. I don't, I, Al, I'm not sure she needs to push that far up every single time because she's killing her with it. Again, she's not reading that at all, is she? She's trying to cover the drop and then leaving that space open in the back. Because Perry has that powerful wrist, she can get quite a lot of pace on the ball, even when she's waiting quite quite late to hit it, which is exactly. not everyone has that ability to hold and then still get a lot of pace through the, through the racket head speed. Down. Oh, that's unlucky. Had her wrong footed there. She did. Right side, please. It's a nice miles. little variation.
No let. No let. Hands out. That's harsh. Two, three. I think that is harsh. She's really just showing that she can get through there. I mean, she caught the ball almost, didn't she? Fine. Now please play on. She's completely off balance. <laughs> And out, two, three. Nice to see a new sponsor this year for the Nationals. Blowers, Jewelers. Did you know Mark Blowers? He was a good player. I know of him. No, I don't know him at all, really. Yeah, but better. Uh, obviously, James... Uh, no let. No let. I know him from back in and the day. Conduct yeah. warning, unnecessary physical conduct. Contact. <laughs> You don't want Sarah Jane Perry no coming into the back of you. Certainly not like that. Any need to push her over like that. No let free all. Sure, there wasn't too much malice in that, but nevertheless, no, it was slightly I mean, excessive. When you're trying to show a referee that you can get a ball back, obviously you're going at full speed, and Perry is a big athlete, as we've said. That was the first time we've seen Al's best area working she really got onto that and was clinical and put it away no let no let bit more hold there from uh, from waters minimal interference you need to go and play the ball I agree with the referee there it was minimal or ball, ball just clipped side wall which i don't think waters intended but it's sort of got perry on the wrong foot yeah she needs to keep her head here perry not get rattled Hand out for all. <laughs> a look there. Not sure why she's looking at the ref. That was a nice deft drop. Oh, and another one. Lovely finish. You could hear the strings of a racket. Five, Singing there four. almost. Yeah, didn't really try to use as much hold as she normally does there. Just made sure that she hit it accurately. Such a risky shot. Alison Waters was well in front there. Mm. Just forced it a little bit too much. Yes, let. Yes, let. <laughs> Five all. Rally. Both players recognising the importance of this stage of the match. And yeah, that was a huge rally. Six, Very physical. Let's see how important it could prove to be. Saw the fist pump there. Almost animalistic cheer from the six foot Sarah Jane Perry. Oh. 
Waters Seven, not five. responding at all there. Looked like she just tweaked her ankle ever so slightly. No, 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 it was never going to be a let. And out, 6-7. don't think she was actually asking. No, she didn't ask. Just gave Al's back another little tap. <laughs> that was a big point for Waters. Eight five wouldn't have been looking too clever. No. Deep backhand worked so well for her. And out, that boast, eight, though, is just six. random. There's absolutely, you can see Al's hand gesture there. She knows that there's no point in playing that shot. Down. Oh, that's almost in the floor. Cannot afford to make errors like that at this stage of the match. Nine, so six. that gives Perry a crucial three point lead in this fourth. Great then, really good shot. She just took her time a bit more on that one. Seven, nine. Lined it up and straight down the line. Yeah, she hasn't found too many angles like that in this match. Just been a little bit loose. She's often been on the back foot, hasn't she, as a result of SJ's length. She's been getting it fading away. Better angles from Waters and yes, finish. Yes, let. Seven, do you nine. Oh yeah, I mean she does get a racket on it. Mm. It was a good rally though from Waters. Much better. Yeah, she was finding her line a lot better. It's just things like that that aren't really working for her. To be trouble. Perry. Stroke to Perry. Hand out. No, you've played the ball back towards yourself and stood there. You need oh, to. From that angle, it doesn't really look like a stroke because she's shaping up on the wrong stroke side. Perry. Yeah, hand out. Back hand there. Ten seven. Shot. Matt ball. But the stroke is given. There's no appeal. So Sarah Jane Perry has three match balls. I think Al's gesturing to the invisible video <laughs> review screen that doesn't exist at the national championships. We're spoilt with that on the PSA World Tour sometimes. I thought that could be curtains. That's it. 11, Sarah Jane 7. Perry. Max Finishing things off in style in that fourth game. Perry, three games to one. 11 6, 11 8, 9 11, 11 7. So Sarah Jane Perry moves into uh, Perry the final the here final. for the second but time. Can have your appreciation, please, for Sarah Jane Perry. With a 3 1 win Colin, over Alison Waters. Waters. So let's hear what she has to say. Sarah Jane, congratulations, back in the final for the second time. Uh, as we've made reference to earlier this week, uh, 2015 was your, your, the year you won the title. And of course, as we've also said, that was your breakthrough year, not only in the nationals, but also on the tour and on the national side. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, really happy to uh, get the win there. I mean, I started really strongly and then uh, out up her game and then it, Became a bit of a bit of a dogfight, really, um, and you know, neither of us wants to give an inch, and 
uh, you know, it's really, really tough out there. And so I'm really happy to get the win. And, you know, hopefully I can uh, play well again tomorrow. And hopefully that'll be uh, as good a match as last time. Maybe not. So, of course, tomorrow is uh, against Laura, which was uh, your opponent when you won in 2015. And of course, she's a massive challenge, you know, in Manchester on this court. Um, so consequently, a uh, fantastic opportunity for you. But obviously, you have to respect that Laura is who she is. Oh, yeah, I mean, nobody gets to world number one and becomes world champion without being an amazing player. And, you know, so, you know, like every match gone, they have a lot of respect um, for her. And I'll, you know, try and play, try and play the best of my ability. And uh, hopefully it's a good match. But, you know, she's a great player and I'm just privileged to be playing in that final tomorrow. Well, we should look forward to seeing you in the final tomorrow. Sarah Jane, many, many congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Jane Perry. So Sarah Jane Perry moves into the final here for the second time, sets up a great final tomorrow against uh, Laura Massaro. So uh, I believe that you'll be joining me for that one, uh, Jenny. So really looking forward to that. Yes, I will be. Looking forward to it too. It should be a good one. A disappointment for Alison Waters, but a really well deserved win for Sarah Jane Perry. She was in the fine form all match. Alison Waters put up a good resistance in the third and fourth, but uh, overall wasn't to be. She did have a very tough quarter final against Tesney Evans, 75 minutes, so possibly a little bit fatigued in the legs, being forced to do too much work on there. few little altercations with uh, the referee but uh, Sarah Jane Perry just managing to hold it together played a very good fourth and uh, really looking forward to the match tomorrow against uh, Laura Massaro could be really interesting So solid stuff from the tall English player. Thank you very much, Jenny. And we'll see you back here tomorrow in the no final. No problem, see you tomorrow. And don't go away just yet. We have one more semi-final coming up at 7 p.m. That will be a top seed here, Nick Matthew, going for a 10th final appearance and a ninth title in total. He's up against the young Declan James in his first semi-final at this event. That's coming up in uh, just over an hour, so see you then.